Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of me trying to fix and finish an old song name pending. So, uh, we were just about, I don't know where we were at. We were just about to fix up the piano. I was thinking since this, uh, piano is out of the key, intentionally so, but the, uh, uh, how it came out was not quite how I wanted it. <sighs> Maybe the name should be Fixing Unreasonable Songs. Fix and Finishing Unreasonable Songs. I don't know. It's Reason. So it was like unreasonable. I, I don't know. I'm going to save this as Lap 2D. The last was 2C. Just so that I know that I'm not going to be losing anything. There's nothing really to be lost here yet, but it's a good thing to get in the habit of because you never know. Maybe there is something there that you change and you want to go back to just in case. But I like to have, um, I like to make a new save file of a project every once in a while. Okay, let's do it. Let's listen to this piano. So this one, there we go. So I think that sounds good. Uh, what do we got next? Okay, that the intro is really dull right now. Mostly all we've been doing is fixing up instruments and getting them so that they sound good. So what is this one here? We have a pad here we haven't touched. And it's not making any sound, which means something went wrong. But we're gonna redo it anyway. I just have to find where it is. It was called pad duct. Pretty much everything is being ducked. Okay. Create a parallel channel since for whatever reason it was there, but Pad duct, this is going to be bus, pad duct, there we go, and then what am I going to do here is drink some water. That is really loud. So what we've got here is that I want to make sure that this is being sent to where these are getting ducked at, which is the bus called duct so I just click that send it to duct so it looks like what have I done I used to use way too many um I put everything into the channel I I, I do pretty much what I'm doing now but all in one combinator which saves space but to my understanding it like I've noticed could be wrong but like uses more CPU and I just find this more convenient and I don't know this is how I do it now because for whatever reason it works better I don't know it's, I like to do it this way leave me alone so we know that that is extremely loud um Looks like I have some sidechain compression on the reverb setup, so I'm gonna just get rid of all this. If I put in this merger splitter once again. The merger splitter will go out to the reverb, which will go to the input, which will go here, and then we have 
the dry signal sent to the side chain and then it should all come together but we don't need this mixer here because we're only doing one thing in that section we have an EQ I will assume that it's not there for a good reason we have a maximizer with the input gain turned all the way up I'm gonna assume that I don't need that I'm gonna I think I have two separate distortions on here, but I had that probably on the reverb, and if we need it, we'll just add it back in. So let's see how it sounds like now. Our signal chain is interrupted somewhere, so we have a merger splitter there that isn't doing anything, but we do have a mix, a mastering, uh, a mixer there so it's there for a reason should make sound now I want to hear how it sounds without the distortion if I crash I'm sorry oh it's all right have a wonderful night we'll see you around Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful night. Hit me up later or whatevs. So that threshold is like all the way down. So it's like very, I like to keep things subtle when it comes to anything really. So that doesn't really sound good. So I'm listening to the reverb right now. Some of this is entirely too loud, so if something is clipping anywhere in the chain, it's going to mix, it's just going to mess things up. So if you can prevent clipping, by all means do so. <laughs> I, I tend to use the arena reverb on the RV7000. It's a, yeah, RV7000. I don't like these left ear delays and stuff. Like, what is going on here? Shouldn't I don't want to have any delay. Right delay. How about that? Maybe only slightly, but like I can hear the difference and it's kind of bothering me. And maybe that's the characteristic of the, of the arena reverb and I just didn't know about it. But it's kind of crazy right now, this entire instrument. So I'm just trying to turn things down and make sure that nothing's clipping anywhere. Okay, it looks like I was doubling the... Um, like, if you have two of the same exact sound playing at the same time, like no difference between the two all that's going to do is double the loudness so I have in this one I have the normal sound of this uh, instrument and then it's also I have it separated so that it also has a distorted tone to it and they're both being sent to this mixer and I'm actually looking at this and it's, the damage is way up. You can just fiddle with knobs and just 
you know, go by ear. Uh, you will, if you just uh, give it some practice, you'll get it. I'm just going by this by ear, and if any issues pop up, and I hear them, I will fix them. So another thing that you can do to make a, or one thing you can do to make a instrument sound bigger is go to the fine tuning to them and just make it off a little bit and it'll make it sound a little bit bigger. So what have we got here? What are we working with? So I want this to repeat twice. I'm gonna cut this off. Um, if you're wondering, an easy way to jump between your uh, tools. Usually, I just use. Um, I usually, just use. Uh, I think select. Select is Q. It's Q U E R T Y, and then U. Click is Q. Draw is W. Erase is E. I just used select and delete for that. It serves the same function. Cut or the razor tools are. Mute is T. Uh, zoom is Y, but it's kind of redundant in the grab tool. Also kind of redundant. If you want, if you want to do as much as possible, like navigate through these menus the best you can, holding shift in the scroll wheel is great. Um, holding control will zoom in and out, up and down. Control shift will zoom in like this. I, I always get my horizontals and verticals messed up. So like if you see here, this is control, this is control shift, and this is shift. With the mouse wheel, of course. And then it works if you hold shift in this menu or in your rack, it'll also go back and forth and I believe it'll also do so here unfortunately the rack and the sequencer do not have a zoom function which I would be so happy if they did because I'm using a 4k monitor and I still wish I had more space So I'm hearing something, those things are clashing with each other, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the low frequencies, like the sub frequencies. And then there's a chord in there that just doesn't seem to work. I'm thinking here, let me think, I think this and this are clashing. For some reason those chords don't like each other. Yeah, I had 
I had some crazy idea idea there. Let's just copy this and put it there. No. If I listen to it, you might I might be able to come up with something like as a second so it doesn't play the same exact thing twice. Or I'm just hearing things. I think I'm just hearing things. Let's go bam, bam, dun, dun. or something like that. Yeah, some of these notes are outside of the key. crazy C A What is happening here? I'd imagine this is a boring part, so this might just get cut out. This is so weird because I'm hearing things that are not there. I feel like whatever sounds are coming out are completely different. There's a 
sub frequent sub things. C G no G sharp C F. G sharp C F. Huh. That's going to be an A. I'd imagine I didn't detune it that much that it's fiddling with my ears. Maybe I just want it to be something different and the surrounding stuff is not agreeing with it. I have a suspicion that the way that I put this together was to grab these two things and put them together. That actually sounds really bad when put together in one instrument, I guess. Okay, so, since that's out of key, if you, uh, if you show, like, if you present all those notes in the same voicing of the same, in like, if you prevent, if you present all those in the same instrument, at least that one, it really shows and it's really obvious to your ear that that does not sound right. I want to turn down the one that's going ba dum 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 Except I can't find the bus channel because it's in the wrong place. Keep turning that down. Okay, there's a better way to do this. I'm going to make the second part more interesting. I'm going to do... I'm just going to edit this metal melody. That sounds reasonable enough, right? So what can we do here? Because everything else, that's probably the trash bin right there. Or you actually, you know, I've really just, don't think any of this sounds good. <laughs> Could probably just call it here and say, 
I think I... I think I kind of went through a lot of stuff here when it comes to mixing and mastering that might uh, help y'all, but I mean, I could just turn this into an entire song, but that would require a lot more concentration, a lot less talking for me. So imagine this is the beginning of the song and we'll listen through it. So that is going too long, so we'll add in the melody. Could be a little bit louder. I'm gonna see if turning up the velocity on that will help it shine through. No, because it's getting hit at the same time as the bass, it's gonna make it uh much more like the attack on it much more uh much less impactful. Like, is this, is this sound crazy to, to you guys? Because it kind of makes sense, I don't know. Because it's really hard to make an exact choice on where it's going to resolve. Because when you write in a chromatic key like this on top of something else where I mean it's mostly ambiguous what key you're playing in like there's not really many chords going on here I don't think it's just octaves yeah it's just octaves you can if you're ambiguous with the rest of that be given a whole lot of leniency in the, in the choices of notes you have it seems like So let's keep it. This is how I normally do melodies is that just keep playing it. Most of the time. Yeah, that definitely can be where it was. Like I'm just putting places where I would where I know like if I instinctively think don't put it there, I'm putting it there right now. That 
That sounded cool, but that's not what I want it to be. Okay, well, let's listen through it through and see if we can think up something to follow it. Like, I mean, we could come up with some other instruments to voice this next part. I don't know, maybe. Let's fix. I'm going to bring this up in the voicings. Or the the octave. I'm going to bring it up in octave. I can't think. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool, to be honest. Are those the same exact thing? I think those are the same bass notes. Same left hand. And then this part's gonna follow music theory a little bit closer. Basic music theory closer.
I could think we could get a two minute song out of just this, to be honest. Not that we should stop there. I mean, unless it feels, you feel as though it should be that short. That sounded cool when the bass drum hits. I feel like there should be a higher note in here. Which one it should be. Hi hats are very quiet. If I can find them in this list, they're right there. If we remember correctly, of reason just does things, or however I'm doing things causes it to do that. I don't know. C and it goes down to G sharp so it would make sense for it to be G sharp We could very easily just call this a rap beat and just copy paste the entire thing to be honest.
How about that? Would that be an interesting beginning? I think that's exactly as it was before, to be honest. Uh, here we go. Oh, right, we got rid of the hi-hats. Let's add them back in over here. I know a better, easier way to do that. Well, why don't we just do that? If you hold control while you select a clip and you move it, like if you move it, you can do this. If you hold control, it'll leave it there and make a copy. And you can, excuse me, um, it'll, uh, either way you do it, if you start moving it without pressing control and then you hit control, it'll appear right back there and then you'll have a copy of your clip. Um, remember, control Z is to undo as well. And save often. So I want to listen to this through again here. Sometimes I like to layer my chords with little extra, like, uh, like, com I like to complete my triads with different, different voicings and different octaves. That might not make, that might not sound completely musically right, okay. I like to separate like if I make a melody with a piano what I'll do is like um, add like a lower set of chords <coughs> underneath it and usually I won't I'll only use two notes of the chord so it's ambiguous what it is which I mean that's not my thought process but that's what is happening <laughs>
if that that sounds too dissonant with the weird things that's going on in it. I mean, basically. We could put a lot more effort into this if we wanted to. And flush it out into a full fledged song. Maybe I'll do that on my own time. <laughs> Let's listen to it. There is a ride that I could use, and it's right there, and I think I could get away with putting it along with the rest of the symbols. That is an obnoxious ride though. I just want to add a ride in for that section. Oops. It's all coming out of one ear and I don't like that. If you want to put it more to the center, just do it by ear, I guess. But it'll show you on here, wherever it's at. Uh, if I can pull it up. Like, if I put it all the way to the right ear, it'll only play out the right ear up here. If you can see it, it'll be by the hi-hats. If I move it all the way to the left, be all the way to the left but I kind of you know where's the ride usually at? on your right side I'll let it be a little bit to the right side I mean it would be I believe it would be on the left side of the listener but I'm not the listener I mean technically yeah but I don't bother too much with um, stage realism like that I mean, it's not going to make a lick of difference. I mean, you can do it. Like, if you're going to do it that way, just choose. Are you going to try to emulate the sound in the perspective of the drummer or the listener at a live show? So I believe like the ride is usually on the drummer's right side, but if you turn around, it would be on the listener's left side because they'd be facing the drummer. But usually going into that much detail is not something that happens. Oh, this is much better. Much closer to what I want. But the nature of this particular sample, the way it's coming out, it's emphasizing one ear 
way much more than I'd like. I prefer it to at least show up in one in both ears a little bit. trying to find a sample that doesn't sound like too much of like it's like symbols they seem to not have like hmm, they vibrate across m like many frequencies I suppose you could say don't quote me on it but they don't have like one fundamental note and it, it kind of like jumps across them and the harder you hit it the more it does that so I just want the little I want this kind of sound from it so I'm trying to find a very quiet hit on this on the ride for this and of course you wouldn't be hitting the hi-hat and the ride at the same time. So let's do it like this. I, the last idea I have was to copy all this again, unmute it, and then do like this. But I think that's all really we have to learn here. So if I ever get around to finishing this track, I'll leave a link in the description down below. But if you guys, um, for those of you who made it, congratulations. Love you for it. Uh, good on you for trying to improve improve your musical skills you're going in the right direction just by looking to do it um if you got any questions you want me to do a video or anything like that go ahead and ask because if you don't ask i won't do it obviously there would be no chance of me doing it anyway have a wonderful day have a wonderful time bye wonderful time <laughs>